News Nation now as the race tightens between Harris and Trump, Democrats are facing a tough road ahead if they want to maintain majority in the Senate. The Hill and Decision Desk HQ predicting that Republicans have a 70 percent chance of winning control of the Senate and a 56 percent chance of winning the House clean sweep potentially for them. Republicans already expecting to pick up the seat left open by retiring a West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. This putting the pressure on the Senate Democrats to win in seven key races. To break it all down, let's bring in deputy editor of the Inside Elections, Jacob Rubashkin. Jacob, thank you for joining us this morning. As I was noting here, Republicans likely to take West Virginia, meaning technically you only need one more seat for Republicans to gain majority. Their path seeing more likely than Democrats to hold that majority. Is there any scenario where Gem Democrats can hold the fort? There are scenarios in which Democrats can maintain control of the Senate. They all involve Vice President Kamala Harris winning the presidential election. Essentially, they need that tie-breaking vote that uh, then-Vice President Tim Walls would be able to cast to, to make a 50-50 Senate uh, a Democratic majority like they had in the first two years of the Biden administration. The path really squares uh, right on top of two key states, Montana and Ohio, that Democrats have to hold that Trump is going to carry at the top of the ticket this fall. If Democrats can hold both of those seats, in addition to their other vulnerable half dozen incumbents, then they will uh, enter 2025 with 50 Senate seats. Uh, you add in the vice presidential tie-breaking vote, and that's the, the narrowest majority possible. But uh, it is still a, a narrow path for Democrats. So why are you saying then if Harris doesn't win, potentially we see a clean sweep for Republicans from the White House to Capitol Hill overall? It's very difficult to imagine a scenario in which uh, Democrats maintain control of the Senate, but Harris doesn't win the presidency. That would involve mm -hmm. Democrats. Of course, they, they would lose, uh, lose West Virginia, which knocks them down to 50 seats. Um, they would have to win another seat. Uh, be it Texas or Florida, probably the most likely. We already see those races as long shots for Democrats. And if Harris is not performing well at the top of the ticket, it reduces the likelihood that Democrats could flip either of those two seats. So very unlikely that Trump would win the presidential election, but Democrats would actually uh, gain or, or, or enter uh, 2025 with 51 Senate seats. The House is a bit more evenly divided. And ultimately, the, the thing that Democrats have going for them there is that they have to do well in places where we already know Vice President Harris is going to do well. Those blue states, California, New York, Oregon, places like that, that's where Republicans built their majority in 2022. That's where Democrats have the lowest hanging fruit to get back to the majority in 2024. So it actually is possible that Trump could win the White House, uh, Republicans could flip the Senate, but Democrats could flip the House the other direction because of where they need to pick up those seats to reclaim the majority. So it may not necessarily be a clean sweep. Democrats have a, having a higher chance in the House. Let's focus in on Montana and Ohio. The Senate race is there. Those are, as we noted, a must win for Democrats, but they're not an easy win, right? What are the challenges in those races? Both of these are states that we expect Donald Trump to carry at the top of the ticket. He won them in 2016 against Hillary Clinton. He won them again in 2020. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.